Let's go. To begin the process, you have a free ribosome floating around the cytosol, and messenger RNA is being translated into a forming polypeptide. Eventually, the mRNA translates an ER signal sequence. At that point, a signal reception particle, or SRP, bonds to the ER signal sequence and the free ribosome. When the SRP bonds to the free ribosome and the ER signaling sequence, the uh, translation slows down. At this point, the SRP bonds to an SRP receptor on the ER, and a translocation channel begins to come over to the now bonded ribosome. So at this point, the forming polypeptide and ribosome are bonded through the protein translocator, and the plug is removed from the bottom of the protein translocator. Meanwhile, the SRP and the SRP receptor both dissociate from the ribosome, and the SRP returns to the cytosol where it is reused, and the SRP receptor continues to move along the endoplasmic reticulum's membrane looking for the SRP. The polypeptide chain continues to form into the ER lumen and eventually reaches a stop transfer sequence, at which point the signal peptidase cleaves off that sequence and you're left with the formed polypeptide inside of the ER lumen. Before cleavage, however, oligosaccharide transferase will transfer a oligosaccharide group from dolichol phosphate to an asparagine residue on the forming polypeptide. The next step is that the unfolded protein will go through glucose trimming, where two of its terminal glucose will be removed. The final terminal glucose will bond to calnexin, which is a chaperone protein, that will help the protein go through its folding process. Next, glucosidase will remove that terminal protein, or terminal glucose, and one of two things will happen. It's either improperly folded, at which glucosal transferase will remove glucose from UDP and add it back to the improperly folded protein, where it'll go back to calnexin and try and fold correctly, or it will be properly folded, and then in that case, a mannose will be cleaved and it'll go on to exit from the endoplasmic reticulum. Next, the completed protein will begin to bud into vesicles on the endoplasmic reticulum membrane, where it'll travel, these vesicles will travel through the cytosol to the cis side of the Golgi apparatus where they will be further modified. With the Golgi apparatus, the vesicle will fuse with the cis side of the Golgi and the protein inside will be further modified and changed inside the Golgi on its way to the trans side of the Golgi apparatus, which is the exit towards the organelles or membranes towards which it is going. By the time the protein reaches the trans side of the Golgi apparatus, or the exit side, the protein bonds with a certain receptor specific for that protein. A protein coat begins to form as the vesicle begins to bud, and eventually the vesicle buds completely off, and the protein coat releases, leaving the vesicle to head to its intended destination, while the protein coat pieces return to the Golgi apparatus to be reused. Following the vesicle formation, there are two ways that the vesicle can release its contents into whatever organelle or target membrane it is going to. It can either be regulated, in which case a hormone or some type of signal needs to interact with that organelle or cell membrane, and then the intent contents of the vesicle will be released, or it can be unregulated, in which case the vesicle travels directly to whatever membrane and releases its contents, whether it be into an organelle or into the extracellular matrix. The next steps are the movement of the vesicle to the target membrane along the cytoskeleton. So a protein on the cytoskeleton carries the vesicle along towards its target membrane. Next. A Rab protein bonds with the vesicle, and the tethering protein attaches to that Rab protein in the process of tethering. The tethering protein draws in that vesicle to its target membrane. And the third step is docking. Eventually, the tethering protein gets close enough that the T snare and the V snare begin their interactions. 
And then the final step is fusion of the membranes, which occurs after the T-snare and V-snare have brought the two membranes close enough together that they fuse together and the contents of the vesicle can be released into the target membrane and into the organelle or extracellular space. Finally, through the process of docking, T-snares and the V-snares begin their interaction. Since there's cytosol in between the vesicle and the target membrane, all of it needs to be removed in order for the membranes to fuse together. Therefore, a large amount of ATP is used so that the V-snare and the T-snare begin to twist around each other, which forces the vesicle and the target membrane to come together until they coalesce, which is when they're touching. Then, once all of the water is removed in between the two membranes, fusion occurs, the contents of the vesicle are released into the target membrane, and the receptor returns to the Golgi apparatus to pick up the next protein or lipid that it will be carrying.